Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Dave Goss here on MLSSoccer.com, and welcome in to our final day of broadcast here for the Generation Adidas Cup Championships today. And we start off with a beaten like battle. Athletic Power Niente, by far the number one team in this competition, coming into this one yet to concede a goal. Outscoring their opponents 12 to 0 out of Brazil, facing off against Mexican powerhouse Monterrey. Guadalajara in the semi-final 2-0 to reach this point. So the strong so far in this composition. They are tops when it comes to position, chances created, shot, shots on goals, and they will look to put on a show here this afternoon as we look to crown a champion of the Premier Division here. And then right after, we will crown a champion of the Champions Division. That one between the plate later on. Facing off against Uday These two teams lined up and ready to go. You see Parniense walking out there, the Brazilian squad. Very simple lineup for them, the exact same one as their semifinals. Bento in goal. Marcus Vinicius sitting at right back as he has all tournament. Halter remaining at center back. Paula, the captain of this team, alongside him. And then Lucas, once again at left back now in his third straight start. The midfield is where this team really gets it going. Giovanni, number five, has been probably one of, if not the best players in the tournament. Stefano, number eight, out wide on the wings. Demetrius and Thiago. The two danger men on this team. Captain up top, number nine, Igu. Powerful center forward and number 10, Julian. The leader on this team in goal. The leader in the competition and chances created. And one player we are absolutely sure will be a future professional there for this Paraniense team. The kickoff going here to Monterrey of Mexico. It's going to be between Juan Machado up top and Daniel LaHood, the leading scorer from this team. Their back line, Cesar Romero, fifth straight start. He has started every game of this competition along the back line, right to left. Emir Kasha, right back, Kevin Inson, Carlos Salazar, and Daniel Parra at left back. In the man midfield, William Mejia, Jose Alvarado, and Hernan Pineda. Alberto Marcos, who had the opening goal to win the semifinal against Chivas. Uh, right forward, Juan Machado up top, and Daniel LaHood, outlet number 348. He is the attack fulcrum for this team. He leads them in not just goal as well, but he leads in shots. He is third tournament in shots, eight shots on goal. He has been a threat at left wing all tournament, including scoring the second goal in the semifinals against Chivas. We are for our first championship game of the day. This is home stadium. As they face off against C United and MLS action up in Washington, D.C. This now, our eighth day of competition. We started a week ago Friday. The opening group stage, our opening stream was Athletic Pioneer. 5-0 win of D.C. United. They followed that up with a 5-0 victory over Houston Dynamo. They finished at the group stage squeaking by RSL 1-0 to win the group. RSL also coming into that game undefeated. The winner was going to move on. Parniense, maybe I guess you could say a quiet game offensively for them in the last matchup. Coming out on top of Pumas 1-0. The game becoming heated in the final seconds. Pumas not happy with a few of the calls. And maybe a little bit of style of Pyrenees, although you can have very few complaints. They picked up three yellow cards this whole tour. And they played some beautiful soccer throughout this competition. On the flip side for Monterey, they opened up with a 2 1 win against New England to begin the competition. Put up a huge 5 0 victory over the Portland Timbers in the second match. And finished out the group stage. 2-0 at halftime to Sporting C. 
And a matchup of two teams, six points to win the group. They ended up coming back, tying 2-2, winning in penalty kicks 4-3 in dramatic fashion, and then beating Hero in the semifinal to get to the championship. Julian with the cross blocked. And it'll go out for a corner kick, the first of the game. Castro getting to that one. Demetrius and Yulian over in the far side. Yulian Suzuki of Japanese descendant. Born and raised in Curitiba. Demetrius with the ball floated in alive now. Bach and eventually cleared. Dangerous there for Monterey. Time and space, center back follow. A little bit of an unfamiliar position all the way up top. And he puts it. They have dominated in almost every facet of the game throughout this competition. 79% passing accuracy, the best in the Premier Division. 52% in the opponent's half. So even when they are pressured defensive, when they are pressured by the defense, the still are able to keep the ball. You need to take this piece now. The second straight chance here for Parney. It's a floated into the middle of the box. Romero comes out and handles that one well. Cesar Romero. Has had a strong tournament in goal for the Monterey squad. This is now his fifth start. He's only conceded three goals. Clean sheet in the semifinals, which is a lot against Chivas, who have two of the three leading scorers in the tournament, including right now the Golden Boot leader, Juan Macias. line himself he's shown since the first the to hold up the ball and bring his team into play as well as to be on the end finishes he set up the lone goal in the semifinal his only cross of the entire tournament was for the assist incredible testament to his soccer IQ that he wasn't getting opportunities in the middle pulled himself out wide in a beautiful ball that Tiago put his head into a deep was able to drive home for the winner. Monterey had less of the possession in the first half against Chivas but took a 1-0 lead capitalizing beautifully off a turnover out of the Chivas back line and Machado up top found Roberto Marcos making the run down the right side who buried it in the far post. These two teams, when you look at all the stats that have been probably put together by Opta throughout this competition, really do come out as the top teams. So we are seeing the two best teams for sure face off and are in the end. They may be the best team in this tournament. Had only four shots on goal. Zero goals conceded. He didn't have to push two off the crossbar off of corner kicks against Pumas. The first chance of the game went to Pumas. And then late in the game, a corner kick that looked like it should have been handled easily. And Bento going backwards into his own goal, put it off the crossbar. So Monterey might have a chance. Competition, but also a physically dominating holding midfielder who has wowed really coaches at this tournament. And then Julian with a flair number 10 who takes risks, takes chances. 14 chances created in just four games so far in this tournament. Four goals and two assists as well.
Monterey have a little bit of something to follow as their younger team won their Dallas Cup Division Championship here on this field just minutes ago. It was the game that this one is following here at Toyota Stadium. So this Monterey team will like to try and step up to that lofty setting. Giovanni now looking for a teammate. Close down, find Stefano. Intercepted. Back now on the ball for Paraniense. The through ball towards Igu. Great interception from Salazar to save it. Now Machado coming all the way back to help his team gain some possession. Romero blasts it long. Flicked on in the midfield by Pineda. Roberto Marcos. It's taken away here by Lucas. Tiago in a battle with three Monterey players and a foul finally called on Castro. And I'm talking to now from our head official, Mike Lavarain. Seventy-six degrees and sunny here in Frisco. The weather has been almost as entertaining to watch as this Paraniense side has been. Freezing cold rain on the first day. Cold and windy the second day. Almost 50 mile per hour gusts on the third day that really affected and changed the way every one of those games played out. And now the last two days have been sunny and clear. The wind has died down as the semifinals and finals entered here, the big stadium. Still consolation games played out at Toyota Soccer Center. And we'll get you some of these scores as we roll through these two championship games back to back. Monterey looking to connect a little bit. Paraniense, no surprise, starting out with the bulk of possession. They average 52% possession in their games throughout this tournament. Monterey just a click over that at 54% possession. Stefano with time. The relationship, the partnership between Stefano and Giovanni, so huge for this team as they cover ground and fill in space to make sure this team keeps their balance. You saw when Giovanni was closed down on the far right side a few minutes ago, Stefano knew exactly where to be to be the help and outlet for him. The hood and... Machado putting on a little bit of pressure. And Paulo hits that one over the head of Julian. Monterey out of the same city that bears their name. City rivals with Tigres currently sitting in first place in Liga MX at the senior side. Base now down the left wing. The cross from Lahoud finally blocked and now cleared away. Offsides is called.
Nate Ranger and Chris Watto, our fourth officials for this one. Just under 15 minutes into the first half here. Pineda looking for some space down the right side. Gets the cross in and into the safe hands of Bento. Good look in open play there for this Monterey team. Pineda now in his fifth straight start. He scored in the opener. But he has been a threat offensively, a great chance creator. 20 chances created. Sorry, 20 crosses from open play. Now 21 if you include that one. Second in the tournament. Eight chances created for his teammates so far in this competition. This one's knocked out of bounds. So it'll go out for a corner kick. Now mind you, Pumas getting two great looks off the crossbar in the semifinals against this Paraniense squad. Bento struggling with corner kicks. So we'll see what happens here. Looks like Pineda is going to take this one on that far side. The cross comes in. Still alive now in the box. Turned around by Monterey. Now Marcos trying to get the ball. Back in Giovanni and Demetrius closed down. Demetrius and Marcos in a battle. Both coaching staffs want a call made. Great work from Demetrius to keep it alive along that sideline. Stefano trying to put it into the path of Tiago. And now Parniense a chance to clear their lines. Monterey head coach Omar Gomez applauding his team there. Happy with their ability to put some pressure on. Four Mexican teams represented here at this competition. Pumas, Chivas, Monterey, as well as a Mexican U-17 national team that is looking to qualify and compete for 2017 World Cup next year in India. Great tackle by Giovanni in open space. Gets it to the feet of Demetrius. Can Parnier say counter? Looks like Monterey has numbers back. Down the line toward Lucas and Castro able to play it out. It's not going to be an easy afternoon for this Monterey back line. Giovanni gets it taken away from behind. Great work there from Machado. Unlike Monterey wanted that one to go forward instead of back. Juan Machado choosing the safer route. You can't blame him. He's had a great tournament. Four assists so far, including the assist in the semifinal for the winning goal. He's got a goal himself against Portland. But he has done the hold-up job perfectly to allow Roberto Marcos two goals and Daniel Lahoud three goals to create opportunities on the wing around him. These players not far from making their professional debuts. Parniense feel like their number 10, Julian, is probably a year away from making his first team debut. This Parniense squad just sold Jetson for over 30 million euros out to China. You have seen the money flowing from China throughout the soccer world. At the halfway point here in the first half, on MLSsoccer.com, I'm David Goss, bringing you the premier division championship of the Generation Adidas Cup 2016. New York Red Bulls won this 
division last year over Independiente Medellin of Chile, of Colombia. And this year it's Monterrey of Mexico facing off against Atletico Paraniense out of Curitiba, Brazil. One of the host cities of the 2014 World Cup. Paraniense, a long time esteemed academy in Brazil. Halter. This one down the line. It's too long for Julian. For Monterrey, I said first place in Liga MX right now at the highest level. Not a team that historically has brought through superstars from the academy level. But one of the things you see about them is how professional their academy is put together and run in Liga or Mexico, producing an unbelievable amount of young talent over the last few years. And Monterrey, a part of that. Cash were able to step up. Monterey pushing their line a little bit higher. Keeping the ball in. Parnienses half. Good one-two between Stefano and Giovanni. You'll see number seven and number 16 for this Paraniense squad, Tiago and Demetrius, swap wings but have the freedom to roam, to float in field, pick up the ball wherever they see fit and create opportunities, whether as a second forward coming in, playing alongside the central midfield. There's a lot of freedom in this Paraniense squad, and part of that is how comfortable every player is in their role. Good turnover forced there by Monterey into the path of Lahoud. He's not able to close it down. That one bouncing over both players' heads. Julian battling for the header, loses out. Demetrius able to keep it in. Acres of space now opening up in this attacking half. Tiago brings it down. Marcos defending him, trying to force him back infield. He allows Tiago to turn. The quick cut gives him space to run. Demetrius has it taken off his foot. Julian with a perfect ball down the right side, just a little bit too soft. It was a great idea off the first touch from Julian. Giovanni at the base of the midfield, pulling the strings. As I said, what a tournament he's had. This his fifth straight start. He's only subbed out once. He's played the full game in every game. Now, reminder, Generation Adidas Cup, two 35-minute halves. If we are tied after the end of regular time, we will go straight to a penalty kick shootout. Great dummy there from Dimitris. Marcus Vinicius with the shot in, and Romero takes it cleanly. But Giovanni, 174 total passes coming into this game completed. Second most in the tournament, 85% passing accuracy. He's won 68% of his duels, a mind-blowing number. The team at about 52%. Shows you how above average Giovanni has been both in tackling and in passing. To go along with all of that, only four fouls conceded, zero cards. This team, impressive to hold their mental fortitude against Pumas in the last game as Pumas was out of control. Their coach pushing one of the members of the medical staff of Paraniense, and yet 
Parniense as a team. Only three yellow cards in the tournament. Cleared away by Monterey. Monterey looking good defensively, bending but not breaking. Not allowing that back line to be breached in any way. Those five midfielders doing a good job staying in position. Now the chance to potentially break. Pineda looking for some space. Machado gets it taken off his foot. Tiago looks to cut in field. He had Igu making the run on the far side. The number nine. Good work from Tiago to stay with the ball. Now Julian looks for the direct ball to Igu. He brings it down on his chest. Flicked on to Demetrius. The shot and over the top. And that is what we've gotten from this Brazilian team all tournament. Gorgeous soccer from front to back. Julian hits the ball on the dime. Igu brings it down. The header flicked on to Demetrius, whose first touch sets him up for the volley just over the crossbar. But gorgeous soccer once again from this Brazilian team building up from the back. Now Monterey, as I said, not a lot of opportunities or possession in the first half against a lethal Chivas team in the semifinal, and they were able to pounce on a mistake and open up a 1-0 lead. Very intelligent Monterey team. Understanding how to manage the moment throughout the tournament. Great mental fortitude as well, so they won't be discouraged in any way by Parniense's ability to create chances. Tiago getting out of space to the feet of Stefano. Two Parniense players there. Giovanni able to spray it wide now. Marcus Vinicius in his fifth start of the competition. Cross cleared away. Paraniense right on their number with about 53% possession so far in this first half. Monterey down at 47%. Monterey have been great defensively though so far. Not wilting under the ball possession. Paraniense are losing any of their runners. You can see there Tiago and Demetrius right alongside Ego in the middle of the field. As I said, that freedom to float and find the game as well as, you have to say, the ability of the two fullbacks for this Pyrenees squad to give the team width when they need it. Julian's pass turned over. Pineda now finds the feet of Marcos. Roberto Marcos down the right side. Great work to get by the first man, Giovanni. Now into the box, the left-footed shot, and it's blocked by Paulo. A good run there from Marcos. Picking it up at midfield, getting all the way into the box with space to shoot. This one pushed now in front to the feet of Tiago, and he takes the foul and goes down. A simple call made there on Jose Alvarado. Our head official, not much of a question mark there. This Monterey team, as well as Parniense, bringing the exact same starting lineup here in the finals as they did in the semifinals. Marcus, the manager of Parniense, and Omar Gomez, the manager of Monterey, with the, if it's not broken, don't fix it. Thought process. It'll be Julian to take on this set piece once again. We saw Romero command a set piece easily from a similar position early in this first half. Julian clips it in, gets under it, and Romero once again out and strongly takes it. So 27 minutes passed, just eight minutes of 
regular time here in this first half remaining. These two teams locked in at 0-0 as they play for the Premier Division title of 2016. Both these teams in their first ever invite to this competition. This is the ninth year of the Generation Adidas Cup, the third year involving international play. Stoke City winning the championship division the first year in which internationals were invited only to that level. Last year, New York Red Bulls knocking off Independiente Medellin in the Premier Division and River Plate beating Eintracht Frankfurt in the championship. And this year it'll be all international winners. FC Dallas falling in heartbreaking fashion on a 73rd minute goal against Ude Chile in the semifinals. They were up 3-0 at halftime against Villarreal in the third place game of the championship division out on field four. When I left to come over here to get ready for this game, should be closing up in a few mi minutes, but Paxton Pomichol, a name that every MLS fan will want to remember. He had a hat trick in the first half. He pulled the strings in a 3-1 win over Valencia from central midfield. Played central midfield throughout the group stage and then here in the final, or excuse me, in the third place game, moving over and playing as a center forward and scoring a hat trick in the first half. What a player he is turning out to be. Just 16 years old, along with Jesus Ferreira. He's going to be a name that FC Dallas fans are going to know very well in the coming years. Igu does well to turn out of trouble. The tackle made in the open field, though, by Mejia. Marcos with the layoff, the one-two towards him. Paulo out to close it down for the Paraniense. Marcos clips it down the middle. Good recognition from Marcos to see the center back out of place. Demetrius breaks the first tackle. Gets it to the feet of Yulian down this left wing now. Tiago can't get his touch correct. Not happy with Yulian at all. I think he wanted to play to his feet, not out in front of him. Hasn't been a lot of times that the young playmaker Yulian has made the wrong pass. Paraniense winning their group. With RSL getting into second place on six points in the group stage. Yulian's beaten there. DC United finishing on two points in Group A and Houston on one point. In Group B, it was Chivas, a perfect record, nine points. Seattle Sounders after a third group stage game victory over Orlando, ending up in second place on three points. The fire behind them also on three points, and Orlando rounding it out also on three points. In Group C, Pumas won the group on the last day on seven points. FC Tokyo in second place with five points after they fell on the final day to the Philadelphia Union, who finished with four points in the Colorado Rapids. Two points for an opening day PK victory over Philadelphia Union. And in Group D, Monterey, eight points. SKC, seven points to fall just short of moving on. The New England Revolution, three points. And the Portland Timbers, zero points. The Timbers, the youngest team in this competition. Igu now with the right-footed strike, and he pokes it wide of the far post. Question marks over whether or not he was onside from here. He definitely looked on sides, but everyone really stopping a beat to look around. And Igu putting the final chance up and over the crossbar. He hasn't missed a lot of opportunities so far in this tournament. Romero punts that one long. Romero having a good job, doing a good job so far in this game. And taking care of what little work has come his way. A few shots have gone up and over 
his crossbar. He's only got one total save. He's handled a few crosses well off those set pieces from Julian. Cross comes in here for Monterey. Stefano flicks it on. Julian trying to get it to Tiago. Now the header back. Good work from Monterey to come back and not allow the counter attack. Lucas brings it down, but he uses his arm. And a free kick going the other way. Marcos takes it quickly to Pineda. Pineda lines up the cross to the far post. Lahoud was closing. Both these teams, a lot of magic in their teams. Creative players that can make something out of nothing. Question is which team will step up and do it first. Tiago has some space. Monterey looking to recover, but they do have numbers back. Parniense will have to cut. Something out of nothing here to the near post to Tiago. Igu gets it into the box. Can he turn and shoot? And it's blocked away, and the deflection goes out for a corner kick. Three power Nancy attacking players against five Monterey defensive players. And they're still able to get a half chance and earn a corner kick here. The closing minutes of this first half, this first of two 35-minute halves here in the opening championship game of the afternoon, the 2016 Premier Division title game. Letico Parniense looking to take the lead into halftime. The cross comes in over the head of everyone and out the other side. Marcos turns infield. And it looks like a potential head injury. So our head official, Chris Lavarain, excuse me, Mike Lavarain, blowing the whistle, allowing the medical staff to come out. A slow first half for these two teams as they feel each other out. And as you kind of expect in a championship game, three shots total for Paraniense, just one on goal. Two shots total for Monterey, none on goal so far. Paraniense at about their average 52% possession in this first half. Monterey have defended very well so far, winning the majority of the duels as well as cleaning up with a few interceptions throughout the game. They've, played, they've stayed structured as they would have talked about coming into this one. They didn't panic. They didn't pull out of their defensive shell to try and pressure Paraniense in unnecessary positions. They've given really the whole midfield area over to Paraniense to allow them to possess the ball and move it around. They've stayed in there. 10-man defensive structure with really just Juan Machado up top. Even though he has dropped in to defend as well. So it looks like Daniel Parra, the man who went down with the injury, is okay, and he returns to the field over at left back. Parra's been phenomenal for this team. Scored the goal to lead the comeback against SKC in that final group stage game to bring them to the semifinals, and now we're here at the finals. Monterrey and Atletico Parra Niense out of Brazil. 0-0 here in the first half. The majority of the chances in possession to Paraniense, but Monterey will be happy. They've controlled this first half. They put themselves exactly where they want. Opportunity to hit one against the counter and take a lead like they did against Chivas and make their way to the championship here in the Premier Division title game. We'll be back here on MLSsoccer.com in about 10 minutes with all of your second half action.
on here. This is great. Good catch on you.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Just a minute left to go until we begin the second half here of this championship title game for the premier division of the 2016 MLS Generation Adidas Cup here on MLSsoccer.com. I'm David Goss. We've been bringing you the coverage over the last week, and we close. We put a bow on it here today with two championship games, the first of which tied 0-0 at halftime between two of the most entertaining teams of the competition, Atletico Parniense, creating 45 chances in the tournament coming up to this one. First in the competition, showing you how dangerous they can be. Monterey putting in 52 crosses, completing 38% of them. That was the most in the Premier Division as well. So two teams, different attacking styles, but both love to get forward and play. So we begin our second 35-minute half. If this game remains tied, we head to two 10-minute overtimes. And if still tied after that, we would head to a penalty kick shootout. Figured I might as well wait to see if the big number nine, Igu, put that one in and made it a non-starter of a conversation when talking about potential overtime and penalty kicks. Cesar Romero in goal. And right back for this Monterey team is Emir Castro, the center back pairing of Carlos Salazar and Kevin Infanson, and at left back Daniel Parra, the leading passer on this team. William Mejia, Jose Alvarado, and Hernan Pineda in the midfield, and this man leading the line, Juan Machado with the right-footed shot wide of the post, and he's flanked by the two leading scorers on this team, Roberto Marcos with two goals at right forward, and on the left side, Daniel Lahoud with three goals leading this team. For Atletico Paraniense, number one in goal, Bento, number two at right back, Marcus Vinicius, number four and number 13 at center back, Paulo and Halter, and at left back, Lucas in the midfield, Gio Giovanni, the number five in that classic holding midfield role around him, Stefano, Demetrius, and Tiago in the two key attacking fulcrums. The captain, the number nine, the big man up front, Igu, and underneath him, the leading goal scorer in this division, as well as the leading chance creator, number 10, Julian, who we saw just go down to the ground. Lucas able to get it to defeated Demetrius, and a free kick called in favor of Parniense. Parniense, as I explained in the first half, 10 goals in their first two games of competition. But they only scored one in the first half against DC United before exploding for three goals in seven minutes to open up the second half and eventually winning 5-0. They put up three goals in the first half against Houston and then against RSL, an early goal from Julian that they held on to to win 1-0 in the semifinal as that one's floated in from LaHood towards that far post. So Monterey coming out with a little bit more offensive focus here in the second half. Omar Gomez's men. Parniense didn't score in the first half in the last game against Pumas. Eventually getting the goal from Tiago to win it. Julian thrown to the ground once again. The second time already in this half. The diminutive playmaker. We've seen teams physically try and lash out at him to get him off his game if they can. We'll see if it works. He seems to be the type of player used to it, maybe even relishes in it a little bit. Bento now to take. Toyota Stadium, home to FC Dallas. Here in Frisco, Texas, just a few miles north of downtown Dallas, the host of this generation Adidas Cup. Here in the ninth year of this competition, the best young players from both Major League Soccer and around the world coming here. You saw the U23 US Olympic qualifying team yesterday down in Colombia getting a 1-1 tie. A lot of the players you saw on the field 
at one time played in this competition here in Texas. Pineda looking for some help. Mejia trying to play the one-two with Machado. And now Giovanni back the other way. He set up the lone goal in the semifinal, but that pass for Igu just a little bit too far. Giovanni beat two defenders and laid it out wide to Igu for the winning goal in that game, the hockey assist for the powerful Brazilian. Monterey didn't have most of the possession in the first half, but they didn't seem too troubled by what Paraniense put together very often. Julian floats out left as Tiago has swapped wings. It looks like Demetrius now playing up closer alongside Igu. Marcus Vinicius wins the header. Stefano closed down quickly there by Pineda. You have to say, as strong and as talented as Paraniense is, Monterey must be ecstatic with the way this guy, game has gone so far. Paraniense hasn't really broken through their lines or disorganized them defensively. We've had a few moments of individual brilliance, but not much creativity Creativity to open up chances. As Captain Igu picks up the foul against him, no card shown. Ahead official Mike Lavaron. His assistants today, Nate Ranger and Chris, Chris Watto. Guido Gonzalez, our fourth official. It looks like Parniense is getting ready to make an early substitution. Something we've seen much from this team. Maybe head coach Marcus trying to change up the flow of the game a little. Tiago now has got space. Sprays it out wide, well into the path of Julian. One on one on that far side with Castro. Julian with the cross, right into the hands of Romero. We've seen a few flashes of that clean clin clinical counter attack in this game for Paraniense. They're preparing to bring on Nicholas. It'll be his fourth substitute appearance off the bench. And we'll see who he comes in in place of. Whether this is just a fresh legs, new ideas substitution, or if Parniense are looking to change up their formation a little bit. As Julian tries to go direct to Igu. Romero way out of his goal. Lays it off here to... Para, dangerous moments there for the goalkeeper though. Giovanni losing out there. The Hood does well to keep the defender on his back. Now Pineda out wide right. Put into the box to no one. Paraniense frustrated there with Demetrius as they wanted to counter attack quicker. Monterey hasn't had Many opportunities to attack, and I think Parniense want to take advantage anytime Monterey leave their defensive shell and push numbers forward. Tiago mishits that pass. And the pass up the line won't stay in. So Nicholas ready to come on, and it looks like he's going to come on in place of Stefano. Here in the 44th minute. Stefano's had a wonderful tournament. This is his fifth straight start. He had played every single minute of the competition. So this is his first substitution. One of the leading passers on his team in total passes, as well as percentage. And we'll see how this changes the setup at all 
for Paraniense. So Nicholas gets his first touch. Trying to get it into the path there of Julian. Machado loses the ball. Julian space to turn. Fantastic slide tackle there from Salazar. Eventually losing it out to the free kick, but reading that pass and launching himself from a few feet away. Pineda and Giovanni getting into a little of a patty cake slapping match there. Nicholas to the feet of Demetrius. Now Nicholas with the left-footed cross. And it goes out. Excuse me, it was already out of bounds. And the cross didn't count. And that makes a lot more sense. We're still looking for the opening goal here in this championship game. Atletico Paraniense, 12 goals scored in this tournament. Zero conceded. But they still have work to do to get themselves to a title as Julian blasts that one well wide of the goal. Monterey coming on a little bit slower to start the tournament and peaking at the exact right time. 2-1 win to open up the competition against the New England Revolution and a 5-0 win. A fantastic 2-2 draw against SKC where they storm back from 2-0 down. And then their best game of the competition, a controlled... 2-0 win over Chivas in the semifinal. Currently sitting on what would be their fifth straight half of shutout soccer if they can hold on here. The second half against SKC. Two halves against Chivas in the opening 35 minutes against Paraniense here. Halter will take it. Yonatan was starting alongside Paolo in central defense. The first two games of the competition, Halter came in for him there and has remained. Same for this man, Lucas at left back, who came in for Jax, number six, who started the first two games. And now Lucas in his third straight start to close out the group stage and then the two knockout matches. Giovanni wins that header. Julian can't win the second one. I think Paraniense wants to play the ball down on the ground a little bit more. Fantastic switch of the field there from Castro. Now Lahoud one-on-one with Marcus Vinicius. Daniel Lahoud, the leading scorer on this team, gets the cross away at the far post and headed directly into the hands of Bento. But by far the best chance of the game for this Monterey team. Jose Alvarado making the deep midfield run. The header down, just could not put it on frame. What a switch of the field from Castro to the feet of Lahoud to open up that attack. And Daniel Lahoud knows exactly what to do in those situations. That's why he's such a promising young player for this Monterey team. Three goals already in this competition. Eight shots on goal. At his 12th open field cross of the tournament. Put him in the top 10 for all the players in this competition. A gorgeous afternoon here in Frisco, Texas. 70 degrees and sunny as Daniel LaHood clips that one to the top of the six-yard box. All the momentum there for Alvarado as he makes the run to help out. And you love those late runs from the central midfield to make themselves a second or third option on a cross. 
Yulian holds it up. Now goes long into the corner for Igu. Forcing Monterey to put it out and allowing pa Paraniense to push their lines high. Tiago looking to put a cross in, and that one's blocked as well. Heading out for a corner kick. And it seems like saved by Monterey. Well done between the back line there. Now Giovanni able to keep possession to the feet of Nicholas. Demetrius slipping well in between the lines there. The shot blocked. The turnover now for Monterey. Advantage played by the referee. As Marcos loses possession. Tiago, delightful touch around the first defender. Looking for the feet of Igu on the second pass. And he can't quite finish it. Tiago has been something else to watch on that wing for Atletico throughout this competition. Ball cleared the other way. Machado will chase as Halter's back and deals with it. Jose Alvarado with a header. Slammed into the hands of Bento just minutes ago. The best opportunity of the game for Monterey. Can Parniense now respond? Igu wins it back. Too far in front of Vinicius, but he's able to get control and bangs the shot immediately off of Pineda. Julian to turn in the box, and his cross block. Monterey doing everything they have to to get their body in front of the ball and protect their goal. So this one goes out, it looks like, for a corner kick. So we head towards the midway point of this second half here in the Premier Division title game. Julian Suzuki. Atletico Paraniense trying to pick up his third assist of the competition here. The cross comes in, and it's over the head of Halter. Halter is able to save it, but it looks like it went just out of bounds. So now a throw in coming from Monterey. They're able to breathe a sigh of relief here. Slow down, play just a little bit, although they immediately turn it over. Parniense making a substitution. That man, Nicholas, coming on early on in this second half. Try and find the winning goal in this championship game. Marcus Vinicius into the feet of Igu. Looking for the layoff to Tiago, but comes away to Pineda. Lahoud now, who set that opportunity up for Monterey. Lays it back. Daniel Parra over the top. Machado will flick it on. Perfectly done by Monterey. And Pineda just a step too slow. As Paulo gets there eventually, but puts it out for a corner kick. Perfect soccer there from Monterey to lay it back. Pineda continues his run off the shoulder of Machado, who flicked it on. If not for that interference of Paulo, Pineda was going to be in one on one on goal. Corner kick opportunity now coming from Monterey. As Lahoud comes a little bit closer. And they go short. Pineda now to cross at the near post. It's cleared away by Lucas. And Pineda can't get clean contact on the second opportunity. Roberto Marcos losing possession. And it'll go throw in to Atletico. Monterey are going to have to take advantage of situations like that if they're going to be able to come away with a win here. Machado now looking to hold up the ball, and he's able to bully through two defenders, and then Giovanni finally clips it away. And that's really what Machado's job this tournament has been, and he has done it fantastically. Hasn't always been the prettiest, but a physical presence at center forward and keeping possession to allow his flair players to move up the field. Nicholas with the long switch of the field. Tiago now. Coming in field into the path of Marcus Vinicius, and it's hit a little bit too strong and rolls out of bounds. Vamos, vamos, vamos. 
Machado brings it down, lays it off to Lahoud. Daniel Lahoud in this left side plays the cross and it taken by Bento. Monterey in their road. White jerseys with white shorts, very clean looking. Letico Paraniense in their home. Red and black striped tops. Out of Curitiba, Brazil on the southeast coast of Brazil in between Porto Alegre and Rio de Janeiro. Tiago's called offsides on this through ball. One of the giants, especially in the academy system in Brazil, historically one of the strongest, most groundbreaking academies. A lot of the ideas and tactics used in Brazil and around the world founded and originated at Paraniense. As the substitution's coming now, looks like Jose Alvarado is going to come off in place of Aldo Tamez. This now, Tamez's fourth substitute appearance of the tournament. Scored a goal off the bench to tie it against SKC. In the final group stage game, it was the goal that helped them get to penalty kicks and get to this point. So Tamez, an attacking spark off the bench as this one is guided out by Machado for a corner kick. Almost a devastating mistake there for Marcus Vinicius. Right foot and service played in. Just cleared out of the box. Julian, and it seemed to be William Mejia in a battle. No foul called either way, and the cross comes in deflected, and Bento takes it off the deflection in the box. Looked like a dangerous play there between Julian and Mejia. Now Lahoud clears it, but back into his own box. Still locked in 0-0 here in the title game of the Premier Division between Atletico, Paraniense, and Monterrey. Second substitution of the game coming for Paraniense. Vitor, who started the first two games of the competition at le left midfield, coming on in place of Demetrius, who'd been the man to replace him in that exact role in the last two games. Vitor now with his second substitution, substitute appearance of the competition. It looks like he will go out to that left midfield spot. No goals and no assists so far in the competition for Vitor. But Parniense will be hoping he picks up his first one of either of those categories in this game. Parniense, two dominating 5-0 wins and two close 1-0 wins so far in this tournament. This game, if they are able to get a victory, is going to look a lot more like those second two than it will the first one. For Monterey, the 1-5-0 demolition of the Portland Timbers. Besides that, every game they've played in has been tight. The one goal win over the Revolution. The penalty kick victory over Sporting KC. And a two goal victory over Chivas Guadalajara. That one was a bit more comfortable goal wise, but not physical wise as Chivas picked up two red cards in stoppage time for dangerous plays against Monterey. Lahoud turns around on Vinicius. Puts Machado into space on the left side. Machado now trying to find some space to cross. Is it back to Pineda. Pineda stood up by Nicholas and he's still able to turn towards goal. Gets by the first man, choosing not to cross. As he lays it back, Mejia looking for the feet of Lahoud. 
Monterey with numbers forward, but a mistake on that clearance by Infanzon. Vitor off the bench, gets his first touch. Didn't feel for Julian. Julian's touch too long. And off the deflection, it's gonna go out of bounds on him to Monterey. Ball, we have 10 minutes left to play here in regular time. This is the title game here on MLSsoccer.com. If it's still tied at the end of 70 minutes plus stoppage time, we'll go to two 10-minute overtime periods to decide a winner. And if then, we still have not found a difference between these two teams. We will head to penalty kicks. This tournament in the group stage, if it was tied, going directly to penalty kicks. So we've seen a lot of them over these last few days, and that doesn't change how brutal a way it is to end a game for teams that have played so well, especially two teams now in their fifth game of this competition who have played some fantastic soccer throughout this last week. Marcos, all the way back to Salazar. Now Para. Tiago's able to take it off him. Igu now picks it up in the middle of the field. He's got Tiago out wide right. Julian making the run down the middle. Tiago pulls it back, trying to get to the end line and tackled away by Salazar. Beautifully done by the center back there. Halter puts this one out of bounds. Machado is making the hard run. Smartly, Monterey played it back to the feet of Marcos. This touch, a little bit messy, but it all ends up well for Monterey as Lahoud now gets by Vinicius. Can he save this ball? And it rolls out of bounds and out for a goal kick. Four groups in the Premier Division, 16 teams. A host of MLS teams along with a few international teams teams in this competition from every corner of the globe. FC Tokyo here from Japan, Aspire Academy from Qatar, a few teams out of Spain and Villarreal and Valencia, Ude Chile, as well as Atletico Paraniense from South America. To go along with all the MLS teams, it's been a fantastic competition and now we are looking to crown two champions. The trophy down at midfield right in between the benches for these two teams. Ribbons of both colors adorning it. One of these captains, either Igu for Letico Paraniense or Carlos Salazar for Monterey is gonna lift this trophy at the end of this game. Only minutes left here in this second half for these two teams to try and find a winner. Corner kick coming. Parniense hasn't done much with their corner kick opportunities up until this point. Can Julian put in some better service here as the shadows creep across Toyota Stadium here in Frisco, Texas? The leading score in this competition, two assists as well. Julian with the right-footed cross. Floated into the middle of the box. Romero's punch goes nowhere. Finally headed away by Monterey, and a free kick will go in favor of Aldo Tamez. Off camera throughout that corner kick, Giovanni was over on the sideline, the number five for Atletico Paraniense. He looked to be having an issue with his eyes, maybe contacts or something in his eyes. As the medical staff tried to assist him. We'll keep an eye on that. Not only would you hate to have him not at his best, but you'd hate to lose him in any way in this game. A reminder, this championship game, as well as all the games played here at Generation Adidas Cup, five substitutions available for both teams. So both teams still plenty of opportunity to change up this game or fill in for any tired or hurt players. Pineda able to float the cross in, but Bento gets to it first. He rolls it out towards Victor, but a mistake there as Castro closes in easily, takes the shot immediately, and flashes wide of the near post. A quiet game so far for Emir Castro, trying to make it a little bit louder there with that goal scoring opportunity.
replay there. You see the idea from Bento to try and restart the attack quickly. But the mistake in throwing it too far in front of Vitor with the defender in the way. Now it looks like maybe Giovanni was bleeding as he's being forced to come off. So the medical staff now dealing with that. Maybe not his eyes. Seems to be bleeding in his mouth. So Atletico Paraniense staff tending to that one. While it wouldn't be massive, it would be an upset if Monterey was to win this championship game. But the first 65 minutes have gone exactly the way they'd like. They were composed defensively, gaining confidence offensively here as the second half has worn along, maybe starting to frustrate or worry this Paraniense squad, forcing them to maybe play a little bit outside of their games. You saw Giovanni ready to come back on alongside our fourth official, Guido Gonzalez. But he'll have to wait until he's directed by the head referee to allow him back on. And he's still not allowed back on. He has tried about four or five times. Paulo with a missed touch. Finally gets the clearance away. Julian's not really going to challenge Mejia in the air on balls like that. Into the feet of Marcos. Out wide to Lahoud. Can Lahoud create another opportunity here? Left footed cross coming from him. And Bento takes this one easily. So Giovanni ready to come back on, but still off on the sideline. And for some reason, he has not been allowed back on, but now he will as the whistle goes and Julian draws the foul. A chance to put this one in the box for Paraniense with the height of Vitor, Igu, you think Tiago and Nicholas and maybe Paulo will sneak up into the box. Taken short and quickly. Giovanni now, ball at his feet. Y2 Tiago. Nicholas in trouble, and he gets through two, but trips over the ball, and Lahoud now will try and push it back the other way. Gets it to the feet of Machado, laid back off to Lahoud. Sprayed wide now to Tamez, the substitute. And his ball into the path of Machado. Hit too hard. Can Monterey find a late winner against the run of play here in this second half? They've had more of the possession in the second half. They have not really had the shots to show for it, just the one on target. That one coming off the head of Alvarado. Julian looks for the early cross to Victor. And the service in that final third, which has been... So clinical from Paraniense, just has not been there today. Lucas now in the battle here. Tamez comes away with it. Looks like with that substitution, Roberto Marcos has gone infield more to pick up the slack for Jose Alvarado and Aldo Tamez going out wide on that far right side. Roberto Marcos there with the Winning goal in the semifinal against Chivas and now trying to set up what would be the most likely with this little time left, the winning goal here in the second half against Atletico Paraniense. Roberto Marcos in no rush to take this one. The whistle goes and now the free kick comes in from Marcos. Flicked on and Bento able to come away with it. Dangerous seconds there for Atletico. Bento punts it long. Is there enough time left for either of these teams to create an opportunity? Are we headed to overtime here in the first title game of the afternoon? Here at Toyota Stadium in Frisco, Texas. David Goss coming to you on MLSsoccer.com in the title game of the 2016 Generation Adidas Cup Premier Division. 
Athletic Club Paraniense looking to make it a clean sweep and win the title. Igu with the header to the far post. And he can't find the frame. Romero comes away with it as Julian goes to the ground. But there's not going to be a call there. Atletico Paraniense, 12 goals, goals scored in the tournament. Four victories, no goals conceded. Pitching almost a perfect game from start to finish. Looking to close it out here, but Monterey, as they've shown throughout the tournament, if not the best team in the Premier Division, then easily the second best. This Monterey team... One of the oldest in the tournament. Average age over 16. The third best possession team. The second best team when it comes to passes. And they have been the only team to hold out through a full 70 minutes and not concede a goal to this Atletico Paraniense squad as we get the final whistle of regular time. We are headed to two minutes of overtime here on MLSsoccer.com to 10-minute overtime periods to decide a winner in this one. Atletico Paraniense, eight shots in total, none on goal in the second half, one on goal in the first half, two block shots, one in either half for Monterey, seven total shots here in this competition, one on goal. It was the header from Jose Alvarado in the second half. That was saved by Bento, the best opportunity probably of the game for either teams, for both teams combined. Two block shots for them as well in this second half. 54% possession to Monterey, so bigger than the margin was for Atletico Paraniense in the first half. In total for the game, 51.3% possession for Monterey and 49% possession for Atletico Paraniense. Those numbers just shifted, so that's why they don't equal 100. A great game between these two teams. Both teams battling it out. Total duels, which include aerial duels, battles on tackles, as well as 50-50 balls. Well, almost exactly the same. 49.6% for Monterey, 50.4% for this Atletico Paraniense squad. Parniense has not been troubled much, but Monterey doing a great job staying in this game. Doing a great job of shifting from basically a 4-3-3 in the attack to a 4-5-1 defensively, defending with numbers, doing everything they can to put numbers in front of the ball. And then when they've had opportunities to counterattack, they've gotten forward. Daniel LaHood, the leading scorer and chance creator on this team, floats this one up on the top of the box. And Jose Alvarado gets good pace to the header, but not far enough to either side of Bento. And we find ourselves tied here. 0-0 heading in to this overtime period. Mike Laverne, our head official, walking out with the ball under his arm to restart this match for the third time. Nate Ranger and Chris Watto, the assistant referees, Guido Gonzalez, the fourth official. So 20 minutes left to decide who will be crown champion of the premier division of this 2016 Generation Adidas Cup competition. A reminder coming up. In 35 minutes is our second title game of the day. The championship division crown has to still be awarded. River Plate out of Buenos Aires, Argentina, facing off against Ude Chile of Santiago, Chile. So two South American teams to go along with this Brazilian and Mexican clubs that we see out here. Giovanni looking to spray it to the left. Castro intercepts it. Plays it out into the path of Tamez. Great first touch from Tamez. And Lucas is able to find a way to get a defensive touch to it. David Goss here on MLSsoccer.com for this overtime period of the Premier Division title game. Monterey putting on some pressure. It's turned over and now Parniense will try and leak out. Julian 
Going to play it forward. Igu has not been the presence in this game as he's been throughout the competition. Monterey have done so well with their center back Salazar and Infanson to cut off his service and make his life difficult. Giovanni now for the number nine, Igu. He loses possession in the box. Another monster tackle there from Carlos Salazar. Monterey, his game plan has worked to perfection here in this final. So Omar Gomez's boys have defended as a team and been patient in the attack. Let it call Paraniense. The shining light, the titan of this competition. Yet to find a way through this Monterey team. Julian had Vitor running down the right, but he gets it to Tiago on the left. Now Nicholas quickly. One touch passing from Paraniense to work out of trouble. And now Monterey get back into their defensive shell. They get it wide to Lucas. Back to Nicholas, who came off the bench early in the second half in place of Stefano. Julian drops deep to pick up the ball. He rides one tackle. He rides a second tackle. Charging into the middle of the box. Looks for the layoff. No teammate there, but on the deflection, it comes back to Victor. He loops it to the far post, and Tiago's able to save it. Still alive for Paraniense as he chips it into the middle of the box and taken by Romero. The genius of the young attacking number 10, Julian, for this Paraniense squad almost broke open the Monterey defense. But once again, Salazar and Infanzon are able to make that last gasp defending when necessary. Parnanse just haven't broken through their lines enough. They haven't disorganized this Monterey defense. As Monterey has played this game so intelligently from start to finish. Tiago in a battle with Tamez. And Tamez will be called for the foul. See eyes up. Tiago. Pumas unraveled mentally late in the game against Atletico in the semifinal. Chivas doing the same against Monterrey in the semifinal, but these two teams have kept their cool throughout this competition. I don't expect any different here today. We've seen some top class soccer throughout this afternoon. Vitor down the wing. Marcus Vinicius. Gets it stuck under him, still gets the cross away. Too many cooks in the kitchen as three Parniense players go for that one and no one was able to get a decent look on goal. Julian turns into space, gets by Marcos, the left-footed shot. Easily handled there by Romero. Opportunity starting to open up here as this game trails along at the midway point of this first overtime period. 20 minutes of extra time coming. Here, two 10-minute halves. It's Monterey and Atletico Paraniense went toe-to-toe -to -toe for the regulation 70 minutes and were not able to decide a winner. And so we continue on. Here at Toyota Stadium, the sun is setting behind us. Perfect conditions to play soccer as the temperature starts to drop and the lights are on. And these two teams are ready to put on a show. Julian, gorgeous first touch and pass out wide to Tiago. The Brazilian's starting to find more space. Some step overs from Tiago, and then he steps on the ball at the last second to lose possession. Looks like the Brazilian squad, though, inspired a little bit coming out of the team talk for this extra time period. Halter to the feet of Giovanni. Out wide, read perfectly there by Para. Can Daniel Para restart this attack from a similar situation that they scored against Chivas in? Marcos is able to keep it alive. Pineda now. The switch of the field to Tamez. Aldo Tamez, the second half substitute, trying to bring that attacking verve to the team. Pineda's cross is played in. Brought down here from Para, the left footed shot over the top of the post. The best look of this overtime period for Monterey. As Daniel Parra, the left pack, staying in the attack. He scored the opening goal against Sporting KC. 
in the final group stage, Mass brought that one down well off the chest, got over that one, looped the shot, but just could not find the underside of the crossbar. And Bento will sigh, breathe a sigh of relief as Tiago gets taken down with four defenders around him and a yellow card coming out here. And it'll be given to the holding midfielder, William Mejia, here in the 77th. And that, incredibly, the first yellow card of the game. Show you how well this game has been played between these two teams. Almost identical between the two teams. 347 passes for Monterey. 341 to Parniense and that helps explain why the possession battle is almost the exact same. 50.8% for Monterey, 49.2% for Atletico Paraniense. Monterey's U15's winning their group in the Dallas Cup here on this field right before this game. And now their U17's trying to even up that as Pineda frustrated there trying to kick it off of Vitor to earn him a yellow card. Instead, put it through his legs and out for a Parniense throw and a wasted opportunity there for Monterey. Monterey well known up here in the United States, back-to-back -back CCL champions, led by Humberto Suazo, beating RSL at Rio Tinto Stadium in the second leg to clinch the first of those two titles. Currently sitting in first place in Liga MX with last night's starting U.S. national team player Edgar Castillo in the squad. Free kick down. Now for Monterey, a good opportunity for them. Atletico Paraniense, runners up in 2005 in the Copa Libertadores, the most prestigious of the continental championships in South America. They won the Brazilian title in 2001. Their nickname, Furucao, Portuguese for the Hurricanes. They were known in the early days of the Brazilian championships after they won nine titles all in the 1940s. Pineda standing over this one as well. The right-footed service, both center backs up into the box. On the near post, Parra gets a touch to it and it bounces into the arms of Bento. And Paraniense don't want to wait for Monterey to set up defensively, and Castro wins the first header, trying to keep it from a throw in, and he's able to do so here. Eventually rolling out for a Parniense throw in, but much higher up the field. Well done there from Emir Castro. This one's headed out by Pineda. As I said before, River Plate Uday Chile, the championship division title game. Following this one coming up in just a few minutes as we end the first 10 minutes of extra time, still tied at 0 0. Game started to open up a little bit. Julian and Tiago, a few looks for the Brazilian team. Daniel Parra creating a few opportunities for Monterrey to try and break through. So, 10 minutes left to see if we can find a winner here at Toyota Stadium. If not, we headed, we're headed to dreaded penalty kicks as Bento and Cesar Romero will face off. Looking to give their team a potential title win. A few good looks for Atletico Paraniense here in overtime. 
This coming at the end of a series of crosses and half chances for Paraniense that Tiago clip. Julian has started to see a little bit more space. We've saw him take a couple defenders one on one, and this the best look of overtime. Daniel Para over the top of the crossbar. So Para and Alvarado have had looks for Monterey in this one. Para Niense. The strongest attacking team coming into this game. The stronger of the two, I should say. Attacking teams, 12 goals scored, only zero conceded. They've still yet to concede. But Monterey on a great clean streak as well. The second half of the final group stage game against RSL. Both halves, of course, in the semifinal against Chivas, and now both halves and 10 minutes of extra time against Paraniense as Tiago picks up the first yellow card of the game for Atletico here in the 81st minute. Standard Generation Adidas Cup, 35 minute halves. But because this is a title game, we head to 20 minutes of extra time. No golden goal, so no matter what, we will play out these 10 minutes. We'll see if either of these teams can come away with a win. Paraniense looking to head back to Brazil with a championship trophy in tow. They play in the Brazilian Youth League, as well as they were telling me about one international tournament a month. Normally around South America, they travel to face off against new competition. But making the long trek up here from Brazil. Trying to go one step farther than last year's Brazilian representative, Palmeiras, out of Sao Paulo, who made it to the semifinals before falling to River Plate. Vitor cutting infield, trying to chip it out into the path of Julian. Now Julian a chance to bring this one down. To the feet of Igu, a battle once again between him and Infanson, the Monterey center backs have been colossal so far in this championship tilt. So not much time left. Paraniense yet to go to penalty kicks in this competition. Monterey looked incredible in their penalty kick shootout against Sporting KC. They were calm and collected in all of their attempts. The second attempt of the shootout was saved. And then Romero came back and immediately saved the LA, or excuse me, KC's second attempt. Keeping his side even, and they went on to then score on every single opportunity after that. Pushing the back there from Machado. Throwing in the attacking third coming here for Atletico. Seven minutes left to play at regular time in this second period of overtime of this title game locked in at 0 0. Atletico Paraniense with the cross from Lucas, and it's taken by Romero. Romero in a spot of sunlight as the rest of the field has been covered in shadows, the sun setting behind us on what has been a fantastic week of soccer here at the GA Cup, alongside the Dallas Cup, here in the Dallas-Fort Worth metro area. We've seen some phenomenal young players, both these international teams and the MLS teams. Shot there for Nicholas. We've seen the next crop of young FC Dallas players. Some incredible talent coming through in San Jose as well as potentially a future replacement for Will Trapp through the Crew SC's Academy. New York Red Bulls 
continue to be one of the premier youth academies. Chicago Fire, one of the leaders and homegrown players, signed with a whole list of names once again for their fans to look forward to over the next few years. At the U-12 level, Atlanta United and LAFC both coming out and starting to build their academies, their first participation here at this tournament. They will become full-time participants over the next few years. Monterey, as we've seen all game, in position behind the ball defensively, completely ordered. It looks like a substitute's coming on now for Monterey. Elude Sains will come on. He scored a goal in the second match against Portland, and it looks like he's going to come on in place of Roberto Marcos. Marco stops before he gets off the field to take off his shin guards. This Monterey team, I think, would not be too upset going to penalty kicks, Parniense. The team really pushing to try and win this out and open play, although they've had to be a little bit more calculated and safe than they'd like to be because it would be devastating to be hit against on the counter as Vitor puts that one out of bounds. So does anyone have the answer here in open play, or are we headed to penalty kicks to decide the 2016 Premier Division title winner? Cesar Romero hasn't had much work to do so far in this game, you'd have to say. Two saves made on 11 shots, three crosses collected as well as that one instance where he had to come out of his box to clean up a play and almost got caught out of goal. Lucas loops this one back the other way. Chance to shoot here and that one put over the top for Pineda. So it looks like Signs will come in to the central midfield where Roberto Marcos was playing after the substitution of Alvarado and pick up his role there. Alvarado with his header, one of the two best chances of the game for Monterey along with Daniel Parra's volley in the first period of extra time. For Parniense, amazing to say, but no clear-cut chances to score so far in this game. A few half chances here and there. A good cross from Marcus Vinicius that three Paraniense players closed on but could not find the shot. Infanson heads it away. Igu knocks it down. Vitor is on side somehow, but then plays it out of bounds right there in front of the sign for MLSsoccer.com, where you are right now watching one of the last two matches of the 2016 generation Adidas Cup. All the results, fixtures are on that website from throughout the tournament. Look out as the tournament closes. We'll be putting out players of the tournament, some players to watch in the MLS academies, as I was telling you before, some stars have shined throughout this competition that seem to be the future of the league from coast to coast. Some great young talent being identified and nurtured. This one over the top, Temez is on sides. Can Monterey steal this one at the final whistle? Plays it in. The shot comes into the left side and far of that 
wide of that far post, but deflected. And a corner kick called here by Mike Laveron. So corner kick coming now. Can Monterey steal this one? They were inches away here. Locked in 0-0 in the second period of extra time at the near post. Lucas clears it away. Monterey, can they get a second bite at it? Castro trying to put it back into the box. Puts it straight up in the air. Vitor out into the path of Julian who will put some pressure on. And that will be it. So 90 minutes of soccer played. Could not find a difference between these two clubs who have been phenomenal from the first minute of the first match up until this fifth match in this competition. Monterey winning their group on eight points, beating Chivas 2-0 in the semifinal, and now here in the final against an Atletico Paraniense team that has not conceded a goal all competition, and they were inches away here at the final minute of the second half of stoppage time. They almost found the winner in that far post, and we are headed to penalty kicks. It's going to be Bento versus Romero as these two teams will line up from the spot to decide a winner. What a tournament it has been for both of these clubs. They've been fun to watch. Differing styles. Paraniense, more of the open attacking team. But Monterey have stood up to every challenge that's faced them. They knocked off New England 2-1 to one in their first match. They cruised against the Portland Timbers 5-0 in the second match with their backs against the wall in the third match against Sporting KC. They came back from 2-0 down against the wind at halftime to push out to get to penalty kicks and during penalty kicks after having the second shot saved being behind two to one potentially against the LA Galaxy they turned around and were able to come back win that penalty shootout four to three and make their way to the final. You see the ribbons of the two squads. There is our fearless leader, Chris Lebo, adjusts what is standing in the potential future for one of these teams. Monterrey of Monterrey, Mexico, the Liga MX powerhouse. Their U-17 squad out here trying to earn a piece of international silverware and bring it back to their home city, the soccer center of Mexico right now in that battle between Tigres and Monterrey and Atletico Paraniense, one of the preeminent youth clubs in Brazil, the preeminent youth soccer capital of the world. 12 goals they scored in open play in this tournament, and now they will not concede a single goal, but they could still lose this competition as they gather around and prepare themselves. Monterey, I said, has already had a penalty kick shootout win in this tournament. We've yet to see Paraniense in this competition, so we don't know who will shoot for them. Don't forget, both teams have made some substitutions. Roberto Marcos, who would be shooting for Monterey, he is out of the game. Jose Alvarado, who started in midfield, is also out of the game, as it looks like Monterey will be the first shooter. Looks like who else to shoot first, but the leading goal scorer on the team, Daniel LaHood. He scored off a penalty kick in the second game against the Portland Timbers, as well as scoring his PK in the shootout against Sporting KC. So it's going to be Monterey to lead, and Atletico Paraniense to follow Monterey. The chance to set the tone here as Bento takes the long walk from midfield to the goal off to our left. David Goss here on MLSsoccer.com for this, the penalty kick shootout to, to decide the title of the Premier Division 
after five games of play, 90 minutes of competition between these two teams, nothing to decide it. And we go to PKs. Paraniense and Monterey, their two squads out at midfield, locked in embrace. And the same if you look down on their benches. Daniel LaHood will step up here, and it looks like the left-footed service to start. The first shot from LaHood, and he misses wide of the goal. The leading goal scorer in the competition for Monterey, Daniel LaHood. He'd already scored two PKs in this tournament, and he misses wide as the Monterey fans look on, and now they need Cesar Romero to do what he did against Sporting KC immediately saving the following kick and who else to step up first but the captain and the center forward of this team Igu Alves as he stands over this one the devastating Brazilian forward the number nine to try and give his team the lead Paraniense look for the dream start to these PKs Igu Alves faces off against Cesar Romero, the right-footed shot, and he places it perfectly into the corner, and he bangs the crest over his heart and goes over to talk to his goalkeeper, Par Niense, the second shooting team, but they have the lead now, thanks to their center forward, Igu. Par Niense, you see up there on the score, leading 1-0 in this shootout, a best of five. Stepping up to take the second one here is Hernan Pineda. The 17-year-old, he started all five games. He scored in the opener against New England. He's been one of their creative maestros in this game as well as throughout the tournament. He did the same thing here against Sporting KC. He takes out a small prayer that he reads before the kick. And you'll see no stress from Pineda, perfectly calm and composed. The right-footed shot, and he puts it away. So Pineda now for the second straight shootout in this tournament scores his opportunity, and Cesar Romero is going to need to help his team out if they're going to come away with a title win. And stepping up now, the leading goal scorer in this competition for Paraniense. The creative number 10, Yulian, and he will shoot number two. Yulian Suzuki to take. The right-footed shot in the corner. Cesar Romero guesses the right way. But Yulian, a inch-perfect shot, buries that one in the corner to keep his squad ahead 2-1. to one. And It looks like Halter signaling to the head referee that he will be the second shooter. But before he goes for this Monterey squad, it looks like it's gonna be the left back Daniel Para to shoot. Para, a goal against SKC, almost the goal in this one. The left footed shot comes and he puts it cleanly into the side netting. Bento guesses the wrong way. And one of the things that impressed me so much in the shootout against Sporting KC and once again here is the slow, calm, composed walk up from Daniel Para and the ability to emotionlessly dispatch these shots. These, I have to remind you, are 16 and 17 year old kids in a foreign country for nine days now with the game on the line and on their shoulders and acting every bit the professional they want to be. As Halter now takes a right-footed shot, and he puts it into the corner. Atletico Paraniense right now, three for three, and the door starting to shut for Monterey. They need a score and a save in these next two shots, or they will be going home with a second place medal, and it'll be Omir Castro, the right back now for Monterey. Castro sporting those pink boots, defending consistently well at that right back position. And Bento claps his hands in goal to be as big a presence as he can. Castro steps up the right footed shot, 
and he buries it into the top corner. And once again, a clinical finish from these players. Outside of the first shot from Lahoud that missed the whole thing, every single shot has been perfect from these two teams. And the right left back, excuse me, from Paraniense, Lucas now approaching this one. He came off the bench in the first two games as a substitute, has then started the next three. The group stage game closer against RSL, the semifinal win over Pumas, and now he steps to the spot. The fourth shooter for Parniense. Lucas's shot, and he puts it home. And we move to the final shot. Monterey trailing four to three. They need to score here and then save it or Paraniense will be crowned champions. And you see Lucas talking to his goalkeeper, Bento. Bento starting all five games of this tournament. Did not concede a single goal in open play. And he will face off now against the center back and captain of this team, Carlos Salazar as the fifth shooter for Monterey. Salazar needs to score or this game is over. Bento in goal trying to win it for Paraniense. And Salazar with the left-footed shot and he rolls it home. The composure continues for these kids. And it all falls to the shoulders of Tiago. The young attacking winger in the Neymar style for this Paraniense team. Three goals and three assists in this tournament. A thorn in the side of every team they face. And he steps up to win it for Atletico Paraniense. Tiago now, the right-footed shot for the win. And it's in! Cesar Romero guesses the right way. But Atletico Paraniense are 2016 champions of the premier division of the Generation Adidas Cup. The Brazilian club out of Curry T above Brazil. Shirts are off in celebration as all five shooters put home their opportunities in the penalty kick shootout after a 0-0 stalemate against Monterey and Cesar Romero guessing the right way twice going to his right in these shootouts against Julian and Tiago and really nothing more he could have done as the Brazilians cold-blooded, place the shots into the corner. A perfect penalty kick shootout for this Brazilian team. Lahoud misses the first one for Monterey. And Atletico Parniense, you'd have to say, as deserved, are champions of this division. They opened up with a 5-0 win here on MLSsoccer.com against DC United. Followed that one up with another 5-0. Pacing against the Houston Dynamo. They squeaked out a 1-0 win over RSL to get in to the semifinals. In the semifinals, Pumas gave them all they could handle. Paraniense, a goal set up by the number nine, Igu, and finished by Tiago for the game-winning goal. And then Tiago comes back here. Two days later, and after four straight shooters for Paraniense score their opportunities, Tiago steps up to the spot with all the pressure on his shoulders and dispatches it to that bottom left corner to win the title for his team. So Eagle Eulian will finish as top scorer on this Paraniense squad. As you see this team... A lot to celebrate. Atletico Parniense, you have to say, looked like the best team from the start to the finish of this tournament. And that takes nothing away from what Monterey has been able to do. A 2-1 win over the Revs to open up their group stage. A 5-0 roll over the Portland Timbers. And then two close wins to get themselves into the final. They gave Atletico Paraniense, everything they could handle in this game, holding out the leading scoring team of the Premier Division to 0 0 and a 4 to 3, excuse me, 5 to 4 penalty kick loss, as devastating as it can be. 
Thanks so much for joining us here on MLSsoccer.com for this, the Premier Division title game, as well as the entire competition and holding through all the way through these amazing penalty kick shootout. We will be back in just a few minutes with our second title game, the championship division between River Plate and Uday Chile to decide the title of that division. So stick with us here on MLSsoccer.com for that one. For all of you leaving us, congratulations to Atletico Paraniense, deserved champions of the Premier Division.